Good day there and welcome, my name is Jess Van Den and in today's video I'm going to show you exactly how to make a pair of sterling silver spiral earrings just like the ones I'm wearing right now. In fact, these are the pair I'm about to show you. I've been making sterling silver jewelry under the Ethereal label since 2008 and today I'm going to take you through all the tools, materials and the exact step-by-step -step process you need to follow in order to make a pair of these for yourself. If you decide to do that and let me know how it goes in the comments below. If you decide you just like to buy a pair, you can do that too. Head on over to my shop at afreel.com or check me out on Etsy. Both of those links are in the description. Of course, also don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. It really helps my channel when you do that and also subscribe it would be fantastic if you'd like to see more of these tutorial videos or more videos about how to have a thriving and profitable handmade business and a happy and productive work from home lifestyle, which is what I talk about on this channel. Okay, are you ready to make some beautiful earrings? So obviously we start with our silver. So I use soft sterling silver for these earrings because uh, they are quite bendy. You know, I need to make the swirl shape basically. So for most of my earrings, including these ones I'm wearing as I record this segment, I use half hard or medium sterling silver because it holds its shape a little bit more and when you're dealing with like straight lines then that's more useful. So what we want to do is get our ruler. So you can see how bendy this is, it's really quite flexible. So we want to try to keep it as straight as possible. Push out some, a piece here, let's see which one looks the best. Sometimes it's hard to figure out which one is the, <laughs> is the loose bit. Okay, so then we want to straighten it a little bit, just to make it easier to measure. And then I usually just cut the end off because I want a f the flat end. So see how I'm using the flat side down. And I put that in my waste bucket because we recycle all of our silver. So we keep all the little bits so we can recycle it and send it back. So we want to do four inches. So I put it right up to the end here and then measure four inches and cut right there again. When I'm cutting, I want to make sure the flat end of the pliers is towards the end that I'm keeping. So then again on this bit, I will cut off flat end down, I'll cut off the end, put that in my waist. And then for the second part, I always make sure to match these together because when you, you measure again, sometimes it won't be exact. And even when you do this, you'll find out it won't be exact. So do that, line them up, push that up to the bottom of that one and cut it. So you have two pieces that are pretty much the same length here. Okay, let's put our silver out of the way. Now you wanna check before you start that these two pieces are indeed the same length as close as possible. So what I do is I just tap it on here and I squeeze them up together and then I look at them like this. So I make sure that the two ends, you can see they slid a bit there, that the two ends match together as much as possible at both ends. Then it's time to smooth the ends. So I use a file, a relatively rough file at this stage because I want to you know, get rid of all the jaggedy little pieces on the end because what you don't want is those jaggedy little pieces going through your ear. So you need to make it nice and smooth so that it's comfortable to wear. I just take off the top bit for starters. So this is probably the bit that takes the longest <laughs> because you have to do all four ends and you want to make sure that you get a nice round smooth cap on the top of this. You see I kind of I do the top and then I go on an angle around like so just smoothing it out as I go so that we end up and the way I test it honestly is I just run my finger over it and you know if I can't feel any bits that catch then I know I'm done and this one is smooth and ready to go. Ok, 
Okay, so we're almost done. I just want to give you another tip with this is I slowly spin it around in my fingers like this as I'm filing. And so that just kind of keeps it nice and even all the way around. Just wasn't sure if that was visible earlier. We've now got two pieces that are done and you want to check again that they're the same length because sometimes when you file them down they end up actually being slightly different lengths and you want them to be as even as possible so that the final pair of earrings are as same same as possible. The next step here is to make the shape of the spiral using the silver. So for that I need my round nosed pliers because that is what's going to give us the nice starting point. So I get right in there and what I want to do is I want to I want to take it right close to the tip of the pliers and then I want to see how there's a natural curve in the silver. I want to make sure that I follow that natural curve rather than fighting against it because you know it was in this nice big loop so we want to not fight against that natural curve we just want to go with it because we're making a curved pair of earrings okay so I'm going to take that and then I'm going to just make a small loop okay so step one is to make that initial loop and you want to make that reasonably tight okay then you want to keep going making the spiral from here so the idea is to just use the other end and slowly pull it around until you get the nice spiral shape and this will take some practice you know you might end up with a bit of a mess the first time you do it which is if you're making um, this sort of jewelry I always recommend that you buy some uh, brass or copper of the same dimensions so uh, one millimeter and you can always experiment with that first now they're going to be a bit softer than silver so you know, just be aware of that although soft silver like this is similar so you can experiment and make designs in the much less expensive metals before you actually <laughs> use the silver so that could be a thing to do as well I've made the loop now I want to do what I want to do is this so I'm just going to move this camera so you can better see what I'm doing here and take this loop here and I'm going to hold it with my pliers and then I'm slowly going to spin it and you can see how I'm slowly spinning it into that shape and I twist my pliers and then I spin it and what I'm doing as I do this I'm spinning with this hand but I'm also gently pulling down with this hand okay so I'm kind of gently pulling this down while spinning with this hand and that's what's going to give me a relatively neat and even spiral I just keep rotating my pliers around go more now you can see here I'm starting to go a bit off center so I just even that up a little bit you can see that there and then continue with the spiraling Now there will come a point where you get to the end and you kind of can't do that piece so I'll show you how to do that. At this point I want to use my half round nose pliers so see how this side is flat and this side is rounded okay and that's what I'm going to use to finish off this last little bit here so I'm going to take that there and just pull gently okay I'm just going to do that a bit closer to my face so I can see what I'm doing and you just want to make sure that to gently shape it so that uh, this ends up being the same curve as the rest of the spiral you don't want it to be different to the rest and then at this point you can finesse it a little bit because it is quite soft right so what you want to end up with is a nice neat tidy spiral that's nice and even okay so you can see that is pretty nice and even. So that's our spiral <laughs> at this point. All right, so you can see 
I haven't done anything to it except shape it here. Now the next step of course is to make a matching spiral. <laughs> so now this is going to be a bit difficult the first time because again you don't have the technique down but over time you'll be able to get there. And the hint is just to take it slowly and do the same technique that we did before. So we want to first of all put that, make sure you're holding it in the same part of the pliers as you did before, okay, and make that initial loop. And if you're not sure, you want to check the two loops in the middle, make sure they're the same size, okay. And then go through the process again, making the second spiral. Remembering you're turning with one hand and gently pulling or even just holding it still almost with the other hand Okay, to make the spiral shape tighten in And then when you get to this point again, we want to take our half round pliers and We want to make that final curve there Okay to make it in line with the rest of the earrings. I need to pull it up here so I can see what I'm doing at this point. <laughs> now I can see straight away this one is a little bit wonky because I'm I'm doing it on a bit of a weird angle for the camera. So you can adjust it though. What you want to do is just pull on the bits that are a bit wonky. Now this is very flexible so you can play around with it quite a bit at this point. And just finesse it right finesse it until you get a nice even spiral that's similar to the other one okay so at this point you've got your two spirals and before we do the next stage which is hardening them via hammering we want to make them as same the same as possible so you get them together and you line them up now I usually start by lining up the ends Okay, and then you can see here, they're not quite, I'll put this up here, they're not quite lined up. There's a few little tweaks that need to be made there. So you'll get to know over time, you know, what those tweaks are. But what I'm gonna do is just pull this one a little bit further around, because that's what it needs. It needs a little bit of tightening. Okay, so I'm basically just, I'm just pulling it Tighten it up a little bit, like so. And then you also just want to look at them and make sure that the spirals you've created are aesthetically pleasing and they're not like wonky or lopsided at this point. Compare them again, line them up. Now, at this point, like I said, you want to get them as close as possible, but don't stress a hunt to get them 100% because what's going to happen when you hammer them that will change the shape somewhat it's going to spread them out so you do have to kind of redo this process in a little bit as well make sure to look at them from both sides as well because you're going to see you're going to see different things uh, when you put them and you flip them over and look at them from the other side right I'm pretty happy with that that's pretty good they're pretty much the same size now so as I said, the next step is hammering them. So what we want to do is get our hammer. Okay, so I have a hammer here that has a nice smooth round end on it. And that's what I'm going to be using. So you want to avoid anything with these like sharp edges. You don't want these sharp edges on a hammer because they will mark the silver. So you want the nice round edges. Okay, let's move these out. So at this point is the hammering. Now I'll just explain before I actually hammer because it'll be loud. Now I recommend that you do put on a pair of ear defenders because it can be quite loud. And what we wanna do is just gently hammer one side and then flip it over and keep press and keep doing that. So hammering around sort of from the middle of moving out, out moving in, uh, flip them over, hammer them. 
And what's going to happen with this is that as you hammer, the silver will bow, okay? And so you have to use your the hammering on both sides to fl keep it flat. All right, let's go. And you want to be gentle, so tapping here with not, you don't want to be smacking at it. You want to use gentle, small hammer strokes because Again, this is soft sterling silver, so it's quite malleable and you don't want to hit it too hard and spread it too far and make it too thin. The point of the hammering is to harden the metal so that it will stay where you've put it. to then pick it up and look at it on the plate and make sure it's not obviously unflat <laughs> unflat at any point all right so I'm pretty happy with that I give it a bit of a test hardness test so I squeeze it I mean there'll still be a little bit of give because it's like a spring but it should be pretty hard at this point let's do the other one now another thing to get right here is to ensure before you start hammering that that this the spiral is actually already flat on this plane because when you were making it you might have pulled a bit up or down so you want to actually adjust it and make sure it's flat on on the plane before you start hammering it and you can do that with your tools you might even need to pause occasionally and actually manually adjust it if you've just got a piece that keeps like kicking up uh, you can just you know manually fill with it with your hands to flatten it out before you keep hammering again okay that's looking pretty good now i'm going to compare the two things again i won't take these off yet actually in case i need to hammer some more so i'm going to line them up okay you can see there's a slight discrepancy there and i can tell that that's because one spiral is slightly bigger than the other so i've got two options here i can expand one of the spirals or i can compress the other spiral doesn't really matter it's kind of whatever works for you also one of my um, ends here needs a little bit of adjustment to make the curve correct as does this one now if you have done a good job at the initial shaping this it'll probably be a little bit fiddly if you want to get it as perfect as you possibly can but honestly it's you know at this point it should be looking pretty good and there we have our two spiral earrings so these at this point are now ready to polish so let's take these off grab a polishing cloth I've got one over here and we're going to give them a nice hand polish now if you have a tumbler you could tumble them um, I've always just I don't have a tumbler I've just always fancied doing hand polishing and it gives them a nice sheen without being like super duper high polish if you have a polishing machine you could also do that if you want to bring to them to a really high shine but just be careful if you are using uh, a machine that if it catches on the silver it's likely to deform it okay so I've always found with this sort of design if you don't have a tumbler then hand polishing is generally the way to go and if you're using a nice fresh polishing cloth it'll come up nice and shiny beautiful all right let's do the other one and now we have our beautiful spiral earrings ready to be worn i hope you enjoyed that tutorial again give me a thumbs up if you did i will be back again soon with another one before you go you might like to check out this one which shows you exactly how to make a simple sterling silver ring if you'd like to up your game a bit play around with some soldering then check that one out next thanks so much for being here i'll catch you in the next video bye for now